Welcome to a new video from APC Mastery Path. This is Mo, and I'm glad to be presented today. This video belongs to a series of videos where we're going to be discussing the data that we receive on a daily basis in the construction realm and how we can transform the data into a more enhanced format that is easy to analyze and process. In today's video, we're going to be seeing how we can make the best use of data from later to convert the prompts that we write from text into actionable code to be able to provide insights. The text tag that we're going to be needing for today's video is going to be composed of a number of parts. The first part is an actual programming language. You can download Python from python.org forward slash downloads, and then you can download whatever version that you would desire. I will suggest that you download any version that is newer than version 3.10. The second piece of the text tag is Ulama. You can download it from ulama.com and then you can press on the download icon. Ulama allows chatting with large language models locally on one's machine. And you can also use the Ulama library to embed large language models of your choice into whichever apps you want. There is a wide variety of the models that you can download. And for today's video, we're gonna be using the coder from Quinn. It's Quinn 2.5 coder. If you click on that one, you will find a wide variety of the model sizes, which you can download and choose whatever model sizes you want based on the available GPU. For today's video, I'm gonna be using the 32 billion parameter model. What you need to do is just copy it and open a terminal window and then paste llama run or llama pool and then the name of the model itself. It's gonna take a fair bit of time. Make sure to download the model that suits your GPU. The third piece of the text tag that we're gonna be using in today's video is the data form later from Microsoft which is basically allowing to create rich visualizations using large language models. The role of the large language models is to convert the prompt that we write into Python code, which deals with uploaded data sets. You can go to github.com forward slash Microsoft and then forward slash data formulator in order to have a thorough look on the actual repository for this new initiative. You can download data formulator in a way that is quite simple. Just pip install data formulator in your terminal here pip install data underscore formulator for me i've already installed it and then you can run it using just data underscore formulator and that's the web page that you're going to be greeted with when you run it inside the data formulator itself there is a number of them settings that we need to understand how they're working. You can go to the timeout. The timeout is basically giving the large language model this amount of seconds to tackle your request and convert it into action book code. I will suggest that you could increase it to above 400 seconds in case you're dealing with a humongous data set. Here you can install whatever model or link whatever model you see fit. In the providers, you can have OpenAI models or Azure from Microsoft or Llama, which is open source, local large language models, Anthropic, backed up by Amazon Web Services or Gemini from Google. In my case, I would use Llama. And if you're using any closed source model, you can put in the API key and the API base and also the API version. The data formulator, they have some documentation about the .n file, which includes the API key, API version, and API base, so that you don't have to rewrite them over and over again. So check the documentation of the Microsoft data formulator. In our case, I'm just going to be using Ulama, and the model that I do possess, or I, and I want to put is Gwencoda, 32 billion parameter, and by default, the API base is 11.434. That's from Ulama. And then you'll have to click on this tab so that it checks that the model is still on your PC and then you can click on apply. Here you have the model uploaded. Up top you have a table. You can add table from clipboard and from file. We're going to be exploring these two options in a little bit and this session is really useful because you can export your analysis into a specific file or import previously made analysis and you can also reset the session itself. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be uploading a file from our own computer. 
So the file I'm going to be uploading is composed of basically apartment blocks alongside their areas, what is the type of the furniture in them, or the furnishing style, how many bathrooms, and what is the price of the rent. The data that I've downloaded is open source data, you can download it from kaggle.com. So here, it's a very minimalist view where you can choose for argument's sake, the bar chart, then you can put in the property type in the x-axis and the price in the y-axis, and you can split by the furniture type in the color. As you can see, the price is not read as number, it's read as text in the APC here. So you can click here and say, convert the price column into numeric values, save it in a new column called modified price. And then you'll find that there is a button here called formulate. You can click on formulate and see what happens. As you can see here, it created something called modified price which we can easily put in the y-axis. The chart itself is pretty accurate. You can also inspect what's happening behind the scenes. Down here, you can see the view transformation code where you can understand further what is the code that has been written. So it used pandas data frame and it used NumPy and it used collections. What it did is that it stripped down the price out of any commas and the likes. It made it float instead of string. It renamed the DF1 price or the data frame price column into the modified price name, which is pretty accurate. But that's really the very simplistic code that is provided by Queen Coder 32 billion parameter. You can also have some inspection on the explanation itself, but in here it's not available. And also you can see the agent dialog. So it was trying to understand and digest each and every single column and what is every column component posed off so that it can have more meaningful analysis. You can also create a new chart by going to the name of the CSV file itself and click on create new charts. We want also to create a new chart here where we want to understand what is the average area. So we can go here and then click auto and then you can type in what prompt you want, which is calculate the average area for every property type and every furnished type. And then you can press on formulate. And as you can see here, it gave a semi-accurate results. What I would do myself is get the average area here and then get the furnish type here in the color. We can see here the average area for each and every single type of property taking into account the furnishing type itself. So the furnishing type is ranging between anywhere between 2,000 to quite close to 4,000 in the apartments for the velas. It's anywhere between 3,000 to an excess of 5,000. We can also add new tables such as from file and then we can add other tables like area to example. We can also calculate the correlation between the areas, each and every single flat and the price of it using this tool as well, we can choose the scatter plots. And what I've done is that I've added tables, so add from file, and then I added another table, which is area two example. Uh, you'll find it here as well on the bottom left, area two example. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding the area from the area to example underscore data. And I'm going to write as well here saying that convert the price into a numeric field and save it on the new column called modified price area two bargain sake and then i'm going to press r and form it and i could tweak it a little bit by having the area here in the size of the each and every single circle and also can put whatever i want with the color i can put property type one of them things that I've seen here is that it's not really easy to filter the data, so you'll have to do that manually. And for further context, here's the zoom in the chart. I could also change it to a linear regression so that we can have the regression line itself. Unfortunately, there's no way you can type it here. So I think that might be an area where we can explore as well. You can also create a visual for a number of them charts. What I've tried to do is I've created, duplicated one of them charts that I calculated the, gap, the average price or area two, as you can see on the left, area two example data. And then I created an average price 
taking into account the property and the furnish type, which did correctly. And the code for it is the same. So it's doing the group by by the property type and furnish type. And it's calculating the average of the price column. I've tried to create an average price or comparison of the average price between the second and the first table, which is that average price and the average price. But it failed to create a collective measure. Normally, what I would expect is using the data in here, it would basically append these two together and add a new column called the area number as in area one and area two. And then it would have also consolidated pricing and consolidated areas. And then I will be able to have the average calculated easily. Any number of hierarchies that I want, whether by property type, furnish type, or even the area number itself. And reaching that point, it's now time to speak about who is this for? So if you have charts like this, you can easily save the charts as scale of vector graphics or even edit the Vega source. This could be useful for a top level manager who is going to have some data sets like this. And that is very clean data as well. The manager is going to be just able to visualize whatever they want using natural language processing by typing in what they want here to be showed in the graph. And also people who normally don't have time to dig into the data or don't know how to drill deeper into each and every single column and drive insights, useful insights from them. The main limitations that I've noticed so far in, in this initiative are as follows. The first one is I'm not able to create complex measures for two different data sets. I was barely able to calculate very simple measures for any one data set. Also, the time needed, whether you are running cloud computing or local computing is a lot of time just for a very simple measure. The graphs here, the are not, they don't contain any labels in terms of the data labels and they, they are not that easy to tweak and change. I cannot change that text type except going through the Vega editor, which is not the easiest to deal with. My take on it is if you're a data analyst who can do data analytics, drill deeper into the data using either Python or Power Query or Excel or Power BI, go for it. This tool is not going to be super useful for you. But if you want to create very fast visuals like what we have done here, understanding trends in a way that is quite fast, or if you're a business so is just trying to promote the usage of cloud based data visualization techniques or tools then this is done for you. And also Microsoft, they have provided very thorough documentation on how you can incorporate the GUI here onto your own solution. But for the time being, I'm just going to be sticking to whatever data visualization software that I use, such as Power BI. All the files that are presented in this series, they are saved on one of my GitHub repositories called Construction Data Analytics. You can navigate to this website by going to github.com forward slash marshaw93 forward slash construction data analytics. And if you're interested in the deployment of AI in the construction industry, you can explore my other repositories. I have a wide variety of repositories with many and large projects related to the AI machine learning deployment in the construction industry. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you found this video useful and insightful. I've prepared a couple of them other videos about fine-tuning large language models and deploying them to open web UI. I'm going to be putting the links in the description below. You can also pay my website a visit at www.apcmasterypath.co.uk where I provide multiple packages for the RSS APC candidates to support them throughout their RSCS journey. Also, I provide lots of insights about the RSS APC process, the different areas of competence, and how you can deploy AI within the construction industry. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe so that you get notified about our latest videos.